Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a disassembly maintenance video for you on this little guy right here. This is the Spydeco Knives Rock Jumper. Straight from Spydeco, oddly enough, with the clip on backwards. Um, <laughs> this guy was put together for left side tip-up carry, which is about half correct, at least as far as I am concerned. So I want to go ahead and take this guy apart. One quick note, though, um, for today's disassembly, I'm going to be trying a different screwdriver set. This one is from Klein Dools, courtesy of the Klein Dools. Um, but they, they I'm checking this out, seeing how their uh, how their process works here, seeing the uh, nature and quality of the tools. Let's see here, grab a T6 bit, because I think that's what it's going to take to get the clip loose. Yep, pop that in there, and take this guy apart. Um, we are going to be doing a full disassembly on this guy. It may have the same issue as the Delica and Endura in terms of a plastic in a backspacer, but I will use a little life hack to get around that. Uh, what do we got here? Looks like T8, T10. All right, so let's grab that. Uh, where are we? We are T8 and we are T10, and there we are going. <clears throat> All right. Beautiful. I think these are going to be T8 in the back here. No, those are T6 too. All right, I lied. Uh, is that what I wanted? No. There we go. Put that back in place. These are T6. All right. So, uh, let's pop this guy apart further. This is kind of an odd release from Spyderco in a lot of ways. It feels like, um, I, I you know, I, I sort of, this is one of those times where I wish I had every product, you know, available to me for comparison purposes. My, my initial instinct, and I'm not claiming, by the way, that this is correct, or and you probably shouldn't take my word for this, but this really feels a lot like a um, like an Indela Warn Cliffy thing, but with a uh, Spydeco stretch body. I don't know for sure, but uh, boy, does it have that sensation, if you will. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure how I, uh, how I feel about all of it yet, but it, it, it's certainly a thing. Right, so we'll clear this out with a bunch of screws in the back here, and then finally switch on over to your T10 here. And here we go. Oh, this is T8. I didn't need the T10 at all. All right, come here. Grab the T8 and put it in there. One downside to this particular screwdriver is that the shaft on it is quite long, even at its shortest setting. Oh, look, there's a washer around the outside of this pivot. I need to make sure to keep that in position. But alrighty, um, we are uh, we're ready to pop this guy apart. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use, as usual, and if he carries about any of the other tools I use for my disassembly and maintenance, oh yeah, plastic backspace. Um, go ahead and check out nickshabazz.com slash tools, uh, and I'll get you more details there. Uh, one thing that was worth noting is that the centering was dead on um, when I got started here, and so that's good. In fact, the, the, the overall, like the, the, it was running very, very well. Um, this was a credit to the Seki factory, if you will. This this did a pretty damn solid job. So that's good. But anyways, yeah, tools are at nickshabazz.com slash tools. Uh, grab some rubbing alcohol here, which I have in a little twist lock uh, pumpy bottle. Um, and uh, that is the technical term, of course. And so they've loyaled these scales with a strong... Uh, oh boy, a lot of oil there. That's okay. And we have popped that out and clean this up. We see here that the steel on this guy is VG10, which is about what I expected, but perhaps not exactly what one might want. VG10 is one of those steels that is fine on the budget end of things, but gets a little less interesting as you get up in the price range. Very easy to sharpen, though. That's a nice thing, I suppose. At least if you're going for a certain target market. I kind of... Maybe I'm completely wrong here, but I sort of feel like this is a knife that's designed... This is one of those rare occasions where having a piece or a pair of tweezers around can be helpful. Because a thin washer trapped in a... Oh, come off it. Get out of there, you little bugger. That wasn't who I wanted, but thank you. I appreciate that. There it is. And I've dropped every other damn thing, but that's okay. Luckily, I, I, I can work with this. We can make it through together with the power of friendship and the power of spending time 
disassembling this knife. Anyways, um, I, I get the impression, uh, for whatever reason, this is sort of aimed at the REI market. Um, for those of you not familiar, REI, or Recreational Equipment Incorporated, is a uh, an outdoor store here in the U.S. of the A, and it is a uh, they, they they are very very um, sort of well it's outdoorsy right it's meant to appeal to people who are basically one step removed from hippies, and um and look I shop there I ain't say it's a bad store I'm just saying you know it it's got a target market so to speak, but anyways I I kind of get the impression that this might be uh, sort of designed uh, to go directly at the outdoorsy demographic rather than the high-speed, low-draggy one. I may be completely off. I may be talking out of my, uh, well, my assets, if you will. But, uh, you know, at the very, very least, that, that that's kind of like the impression I'm getting, the name on it and whatnot, is making me think that they're, they're, they're pitching that that way. And it's not a bad choice. Honestly, I'd like to see more people pitching it that way. The question is just like distribution. It's one of the major problems that I think a lot of knife makers are facing right now is that the classical market of, you know, um, the, 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 the vaguely tactical white guy um, who is who pretty much all knife marketing has been, uh, you know, focused on for the last, oh, I don't know, ever. Um, I think that's starting to get to a point where they're reaching saturation. And so a lot of companies are going to have to start thinking to themselves, okay, well, cool, great. All of those folks, you know, anyone who would be willing to step foot in a gum shop has, uh, has purchased a knife already. Uh, who else? How else do we get to the rest of them? And I think part of that's going to be changing it up, um, both in terms of marketing style and otherwise. And so maybe this is going to be an attempt to do that. Maybe not. Maybe it's just designed for people who like to jump out of helicopters and jump over rocks. I don't know. I'm using some knife pivot lube here, which tends to be a slightly nicer choice. I should actually use the bottle that has labeling on it, right? Um, but anyways, uh, which is a slightly better choice uh, for, um, what am I saying here? Uh, for washer-based actions, just smooths things out a little bit more, which is nice. And I'm going to apply a little bit um, also to the outside of the pivot, uh, well, to the outside of the pivot here as well as to the inside of the back lock bar. And I'll do a little bit along the sides as well here, just so everything runs beautifully. Uh, come on now, there we go. And we can rock jump our way along there. All right, let's put this back into position. Beautiful. And... So I'm hoping, needless to say, whether or not this is intended to be in that vein or not, I'm sort of hoping to see companies like Spyderco doing a little bit more of this, right? Um, and I'll leave out that section there, and we'll deal with that in a bit, because this is the way I'm going to have to do it. Um, so the reason I was talking about this little plastic bit here is that this bit is the only thing keeping the lock bar spring in place, and one side worth of plastic is not necessarily going to be robust enough to hold it for a conventional sandwich-style construction. So instead, we have to try a slightly different tack. I have lubricated everything I need to. I have cleaned everything I need to. I'm missing no parts except the backlock and such that I will deal with in a moment. So we'll go ahead and crank this down in there as we would expect. All right, beautiful. So this is in positioning. That's good. All right. <clears throat> so now uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is put this top part on. And I'll start um, uh, cranking some things down a little bit more. Use some locks tight on a stick here. Um... I'll start in the back just because I think I've got the... No, actually, I'll start in the front because I have that driver in place. Whatever. A little Loctite on a stick here. Put this into position. So anyways, yeah. I think, whoa there. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to, to knock you there. This is one of the downsides, again, to having a longer driver. Relative to my normal driver, uh, this is substantially longer. So that's something I'll have to keep in mind. There is a joy to shorter drivers when you are doing shorter tasks, right? I don't need reach particularly when I'm doing knife disassemblies. But okay, um, that's probably going to need a little bit more adjustment. But for the moment, I'll put that away. And we will start with the rest of the screws here. 
this is one of the things, uh, what I was just talking about there, of kind of addressing folks who are historically outside of the knife fold, who might not feel comfortable in the classical knife, uh, you know, uh, outdoor cutlery culture. Um, I think it's one thing that company that a lot of companies have done very well, like James Brand, Summit Knife Co., et cetera. Um, you know, uh, quiet carry even to an extent. Um, I think it's as much a marketing problem as it is anything, but I, I, there, there's definitely a level at which um, I, I think there needs to be some acknowledgement that, well, you can't always have both, right? Um, and so, uh, yeah, I would like to see, so I think Rock Jumper, that kind of thing, even if it is just a name, is a step in the right direction for uh, attracting a different market. And that market is very important, I think, to the knife world. This is a completely unrelated rant, of course. <clears throat> but I think that is a very, very important market for the knife community generally because, let's face it, the people who are going to be talking about, uh, you know, down the road, the kind of people who are going to be thinking about banning knives and things like that in public spheres are exactly the kind of people who are going to be, well, historically not welcome in the, uh, the, the, the knife world. And it's, it's dumb that they weren't welcome to start with, but um, this could be a very valuable alliance, so to speak. You know, if, if your soccer mom is carrying a pocket knife and someone says, oh, pocket knives are banned here, they're going to go like, no, it's dumb. Stop that. Um, as opposed to, oh my God, pearls being clutched. So what I'm doing here is getting the, 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 the back spring back in place. So I basically need to push this down such that this comes into alignment here. So if I push, I've got a, a finger on the back here that's trying to push this little, uh, oh, that has succeeded in pushing this through just too soon, too soon. But anyways, um, my goal here is to kind of get this back spring to slip down into its proper position. And then uh, at the same time, press this pin through. All right, there's that. Coming. Ah, damn. Slipped out of place again. There are more graceful ways to go about this. I've done it better myself, but, um, you know, maybe if I try it with the blade closed, maybe that'll work a little better. Shouldn't matter particularly, but it keeps one degree of freedom down. Yeah, this'll work. Will this work? Yeah, I need to be able to push the blade out of position. Okay, so the other approach I could take would always be to... And this is, by the way, a D-shaped screw, so it needs to be in a specific orientation. So what I'll do is I'll actually use pressure against the ground here to encourage that to pop through. I got two different degrees of freedom I'm having to align this thing in. Uh, now when I press the blade in, it doesn't want to... Okay, let's get that out of my way here. Okay, why couldn't they have just used a metal post there? It just makes things easier. There we go. And we are popped through. Well, not quite, but we are damn near popped through. Go ahead. Push this in the rest of the way. Why are you not through? Um, let's see here. Why are you not through? It just hasn't gotten... Oh, it's hung up on the other line there. All right, uh, what I'm going to try and actually do then is loosen the pivot very slightly. So I'll need that T8 back. And let us... There we go. My goal here is to... Just pop this the rest of the way through. I mean, I could force it, take it down to the bench vise or something, but that just not super ideal. Why are you not coming through? What's your problem here, bro? Maybe it's the back one is providing some tension here. Things need to be aligned well. This should give me a fair amount of freedom here. Hopefully that freedom will allow, because I can see it's just too high. And that makes sense, right? If the back lock... There we go. What I had to do is loosen these back screws here, press down on both sides, and then press with my finger on the other side. Now it's all the way through. And that will allow me to 
Um, is this the right screw? Which of the screws is the correct one here? Is there a difference? I do not believe there to be a difference among those screws. Which would actually make a lot of sense from a manufacturing standpoint. If they use the same screws for the clip as for the back there, that would just be smart. One fewer screw to stock, you know. All right, uh, so we'll pop this through here. And then make sure that everything snaps back together. Not ideal in terms of that construction relative to, for instance, the FRN Chaparral, which does not have that problem at all, um, but because they've done a, uh, a metal pin there. But, you know, Seki said he's going to Seki, I suppose. All right, and that is, of course, the factory in which this is being produced. Put this, now I tighten the pivot down a little bit. And we are more or less dead centered. We are way too tight. Let's loosen this down a little bit. The goal here, of course, is to have it be that this blade is able to move pretty freely when I uh, have the back lock depressed. But there is no play. There we go. And we are centered. No play. All right, good to go. Last thing I got to do, of course, uh, can I loosen that pivot just a little bit more? No play. Nice, easy close. Yeah, okay, that's a little sweeter. Okay, now finally I just need to install the clip the correct direction for my particular use. This is, of course, a four-way clip, which means it can be mounted here, 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 or the here. Either way works out, but uh, let's go ahead and drop it into the position of my choice. Uh, I want P6 again. And let us... Come on. Get some thread locker, because this ain't going anywhere, I suspect. And get this in position here. And I'll give some first impressions, of course, after this. I need to get this popped in place, though, first. There we go, beautiful. And then one more time with feeling... Honestly, first impressions of this are um, pretty straightforward, right? Um, they're, 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 at some level, this is very predictable. This is right in Spydeco's wheelhouse, and I think that's at some level a good thing, right? There's no particular shame or harm in it, right? Um, it, it works. Um, and so, here, let me clear my tools out of the way here. That way, get things straightforward but yeah i mean the fact is this is a one cliff style blade with a delicate and well maybe even more stretch style handle and not a whole heck of a lot else of uh, uh of substantial note the rock jumper here is uh, i think gonna be a pretty solid piece ergonomically it's very good to go it's got a very nice thumb ramp as well as a little bit of area down here it's keeping you from going up onto the blade which I appreciate. It is in VG10, so the price, which I don't actually know at the moment. Um, and by the way, this was sent to me by Spydeco uh, for review. Uh, the, 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 there is that. The lanyard on this guy, the lanyard tube is huge. Um, I'm assuming that this is for, like, sporting purposes. You can feed paracord through there straightforwardly. So again, if they're going after the rock climbing market, maybe... That could be a thing, but um, you've got the, the normal uh, interior jimping here. You remain having a an area for the clip to rest on in the middle there, which is always a great idea. Um, you know, it, it, it's absolutely a, a solid little piece here. Um, uh, let me do a quick size comparison with the Spydeco Delica to show you that this is actually a, a slightly bigger knife. Um, uh, in terms of sharpened blade length, it's a little bit longer than the Delica, and in terms of overall handle size, it's a little bit bigger than the Delica. kind of feels a little bit like a, um, a slightly bigger brother to the Delica, so it's sort of more, it, it almost feels like it is in that Enduro or Stretch area. But at some level, if you're looking for a one cliff blade, you're looking for a very high blade to handle ratio. That is one thing that's notable about this guy. Very often on the Spydeco, um, the, the, the Seki models, you have this little kick area down here that hits your finger so that it is able to um, 
uh, close safely one-handedly, uh, but that ends up meaning that you've got a fair amount of blade that is not visible, so to speak, or uh, I'm sorry, that is, uh, uh, that, that is not sharpened down at the bottom there. This is kind of a skewed bed, right? They've gone all the way to the bottom there, and they have this little notch down here a little bit further back, and they've done that by moving the pivot down a little bit more. Um, this is fine. It works. Um, and the fact that they still have that area means you can still do the thing to close the knife one-handedly. But yeah, so anyways, I mean, my first impressions here were just like, yeah, it's a one cliffy, slightly larger Delica um, with a little bit more stretchy handle. But uh, so far, so good. It's probably one of those that's going to need some pocket time to get a sense of exactly how it's working, what the benefits are, the pros and the cons. It's also a little bit bigger in the pocket overall. So you're going to want that a little extra size relative to your Delica. But um, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you, uh, that you are rock jumping up and down in anticipation of my full review, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.